many of us come today to praise him? Amen. Come to glorify the Lord our God on this day. Thank God for all that has transpired on this day. We thank God for this music ministry. Can we give them another hand of gratitude and appreciation for offering song service for the Lord? Amen. Again, we give honor to God our Father, to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and to the keeping power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, to all of our ministers and their families, to all of our deacons and their families, to you, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord. It is a counted blessing to be in the Lord's service one more time. Those of us who are here this morning have better sense to know that he didn't have to do it. But he did it to demonstrate his favor, grace, and mercy toward us. And you ought to be excited this morning. Amen. The old church would say it's another day's journey. And I'm glad about it. Amen. Many started out last night but didn't make it to this morning. But here we are in the house of the Lord. Reasonable portion of health and strength. And in our right mind. Amen. Thank God that the Easter crowd is gone and <laughs> the real saints are here this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. The question is always raised at this hour, at this place. Is there any word from the Lord? And the faithful response is there is a word from the Lord. I would ask that you would go with us to the Gospel of Luke. Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. I'm sorry, chapter 24. Beginning at verse 44, reading from the New American Standard Bible. If you're there, say amen. amen. Here in the gospel, as Luke recorded, records it in the 24th chapter, 44th verse, these words have been recorded. Now he said to them, these are my words which I speak to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. That's enough right there. Turn to God our Father how we come, Lord, thanking you for this day. God, how I thank you for the privilege of preaching. Thank you for the grace in which I stand. Lord, as I come, I come with clarity and understanding that apart from you, I can do nothing. Therefore, Master, my prayer is that you would increase and I decrease. Pray again, O oh God, that you would breathe on us, your people, and breathe on this, your word. Pray, God, that you would speak your word so clearly this morning. Once your word has been received, that it would be the motivation to cause us to leave this place to do what thus says the Lord. Thank you so much for your darling son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Now, Lord, have your way in this service. Let your spirit speak to our hearts. Let the church hear what thus says the Lord. 
And Lord, the blessing is ours, but the glory, the honor, and the praise belongs to you. We just ask these and many other blessings in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord has pressed upon my heart to enter into this month as a month in which we will emphasize evangelism. And the major theme for this month is a body that starts in motion, stays in motion. But our subject on the day is evangelism is required. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. Evangelism, evangelism is still, still required. required. Amen. Right. Evangelism is still required. Right. Body that starts in motion stays in motion. Imagine that you were in a restaurant, having dinner with your family, and having a great time sharing with the members of your family all the wonderful things that are going on in your lives. And someone at the table across from you where you and your family are sitting in an attempt to light a candle that is on their table, accidentally lights a candle that burns the sleeve of her dress, which causes her clothes to catch on fire. How would you respond to this person's trauma of being burned by trying to light a candle at their table. I believe many of us would, would look while this person is burning up before our eyes. We'll just look at them. Food is too good for me to get up and <laughs> take care of what is needed before me and I paid too much money for this steak. then I believe that some would, be, would, would expect that the restaurant staff would handle this situation. For the most part, I believe that we would continue on with our family not really wanting to be involved in this incident because the truth of the matter is, it's not at our table. Our table is good. Y'all going to pray with me? Not only that, but don't they have professional folk that are paid to do this kind of work called firefighters? Let's just wait for them to show up. And her dress is burning up. In the meantime, this woman's dress, her hair, her skin, thank you, Brother Ralph. Her body is burning up. So the key question is this, church. How would you respond? It's almost like that new television show, uh, What Would You Do? <laughs> Where the professional actors uh, portray to be ordinary people and they create a crisis in the midst of other people, causing them to respond to this particular situation, or simply put, what they would do. I believe that Jesus would want us to help those who are not at our table by responding to their situation, by helping them to put out the fire. Because should we choose not to respond, the reality is truly they will burn up. Jesus commanded that his body, everybody say body. The body is the church. And Jesus commands that this body called the church is to start in motion. 
not only start in motion, but this body should also stay in motion. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 16, after Jesus' resurrection, he simply says one word. He says, go. Start and stay in motion. So, Pastor, what does evangelism mean? What does it what does it mean? How, how do I come to understand what evangelism means? Evangelism simply means concerning ourselves with helping others by saving them, or as Jude would write, snatching them from the fire. It means to look beyond our own tables to help someone who is being traumatized by the fires of unbelief. More than that, I believe evangelizing means to share the good news. The good news. Share the good news and the love of Jesus Christ to others. Why? Because we are recipients of this good news. Are y'all praying with me? And what he wants us to do is to demonstrate our love toward those who are not sitting at our table. And as we look into our text today, now this ain't going to be no hooping message, so if you came to hoop, you're going to have to go down the street. This is teaching time here. Amen? Amen? And as we look into this text today, we, we, we see exactly what evangelism is. Prayerfully, as we go deep into this series, I pray, I pray that we will become energized to aid and assist others to know the love of Jesus Christ in such a way that we respond to their trauma. Simply put, if we seek to save others from their fires, we will need to get up from our tables, tables of comfort, tables of unconcern, tables is that it's not my table, tables is that I'm glad I'm not on fire, tables is that let them deal with their trauma on their own. We got to get up from our table in order to help somebody who's on the other side who are burning in their sin of doubt. Get up and move with intention to help people in their greatest hour of distress. So I'll admit, I come to stand and tell you today, we do a lot of great things in this church. I say we do a lot of great things in this church in the name of the Lord. But I also believe that there are other things that we can focus more clearly on. And that is taking the gospel message everywhere. That's a part of our, that's a part of our mission statement. Am I right about it? Move with intention to help people in their greatest hour of distress. There's always somebody that's going through something who needs to know the care and the concern of the Lord. Y'all only have one point today, and I think it's going to work good enough to have one point. I know how our attention span is. I'm not going to be up here sweating, hollering, jumping through loose, trying to make you shout. Do I have a witness? If the Lord ain't with you, I can't make you shout this morning. Amen? All I can do is give you the word and you do with it what you want to do with it. But I believe when evangelism is required, it is a matter, first of all, just write this down. It's only one point. It's a matter of, revi of revisiting the truth. It's a, ma everybody say, a matter of revisiting the truth. It's a matter of revisiting the truth. 
Jesus says in verse 44, Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Luke records the words that Jesus speak or spoke on the first Resurrection Sunday. Like I mentioned up front, the Easter crowd is gone. Amen. And, and now it's back to those of us who are called the faithful few who are committed to the Lord's service. Y'all don't know when to shout. I just called you a faithful few. Have I got a witness? It's now it's our turn to demonstrate what this is all about. So, so Luke says, after appearing to Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, after appearing to the two men on the Emmaus Road, after appearing before Simon, after appearing before 11 disciples, after inviting them to see the scars of his crucifixion, after eating some broad fish and some honeycomb. Jesus causes his disciples to revisit the truth concerning him. He revisits the truth of what he had already shared with them while he was yet with them. He, he revisits the truth that was always there before he goes to Calvary. He revisits what the scriptures said about him and that all that was said of him was written in three places. Really, it was one Hebrew Bible. They didn't have access to the New Testament. All they had was the Hebrew Scripture. And that Hebrew Scripture consisted of three things, the Law of Moses, Prophets, and the Psalms. Those three Matters of truth is all through the Old Testament. And it's known as the Torah. Somebody say Torah. Torah. Amen. So you'll leave the church today knowing what the Hebrew scriptures meant by the name Torah or Torah. However you want to pronounce it. But the bottom line is it was consisted of the law of Moses, Genesis through Deuteronomy. Right? The prophets and the Psalms. Everything that was written from Genesis to Malachi was written as truth. And the truth is that the Messiah would come. Evangelizing is revisiting the truth concerning the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yet focusing on redemption through his sacrifice. This is First Sunday, isn't it? We, we take what they call communion on First Sunday, don't we? Some of us call it what? The Lord's Supper on First Sunday, don't we? Now, now, if you remember this word, you have been here a long time. Some folk used to call it circumment. Yeah, you've been here a long time. You heard that word, amen. Evangelism is required because with his coming to us as God in the flesh, coming to us as Emmanuel, coming to us as God's lamb who takes away the sin of the world, evangelism is a matter of revisiting the truth. The truth as it relates to the will of God. Choosing to substitute himself in place of our sins. He who knew no sin became sin so that we could become 
the righteousness of God. Amen. Who wouldn't serve a God that would take our place, pack himself with all of our junk, all of our mess, all of our sins, all of our hate, all of our ugliness. Who wouldn't serve a God that would take you just the way you are? I thank God that he chose me. Have I got a witness? And he didn't just choose me when I got tired. He chose me and chose you before the foundation of the earth was ever framed. God saved us, church. I said he saved us. That we may rescue those who are not yet at our tables. Those who are burning in their life of sin without repentance. Church don't preach repentance anymore. Because if we start dealing with people's lifestyle, we may offend somebody. It is what it is. Have I got a witness? We're not going to water down the truth cost cost. You're getting your feelings when the, when the word hits you. Hey, man, lights and walls. I don't preach at folk. I preach the word and the word get at them. And then they say, that preacher must, who told him what I was doing? Ain't nobody told me nothing. That's the spirit of God that serves as a convictor so that he can rescue you. We're not convicted of our sins. We'll keep doing them. I'm almost home, y'all. God saved us to rescue those who are not at our tables, those who are burning in their passion of sin. Without repentance, we have some in our family that we need to evangelize. Have I got a witness? Can't save the world if your home is jacked up. Start home. I'm talking to myself as well. I never preach at you. I'm preaching with you. Have I got a witness? Because we're all in the same Bucket. The Bible says then he, being Jesus, opened their minds to understand the truth, the scriptures. Evangelism is required because Satan is the God of this world. He has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. We live in a time where folk will believe a lie before they'll submit to the truth. I'm not worried about having a huge church because I know truth is broken here. And some folk don't want to sit up under the truth. They want to sit up under trends and all that kind of stuff, gimmicks and all that, uh, a baby shower. No! Truth is going to go forward from this house. And how we deal with it is going to be up between us and God. Have we got a witness? Satan is the God of this world, blinding the minds of those who don't believe. And here is Jesus trying to open their minds to the scriptures. Mm. They're unable to see, Paul would say, the glorious light of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Evangelism is required. I didn't know I was going to finish this early. (laughs) 
Evangelism is required because we're living in a time in what the Bible speaks truth in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1, verses 24 through 26 simply says, Therefore God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. Why do we have this gender identity crisis? Why do we have it? Why does it exist? Because the God of this world has blinded the mind. And God gave them over into the lust of their hearts. Hearts not filled with grace, but hearts filled to impurity. We live in a do what you like. Do it how you feel it society. Thank you, Minister Man. If it feels good, do it. On your way to hell, just do it. If you're going to do it, break some speed limits. Just do it. Just go on. Don't play with it. Just do it. Paul says they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. who is blessed forever. Yeah. Because see, some of us lived in some days when we, when we, we, amen. We, amen. We thought we had creation, but we had a creature. <laughs> you dancing all night long with that gal, boy, they turn them lights on you. Somebody say, creature. She looked like she was something, but when they turned them lights on, she turned from creation to creature real fast. He did too. I ain't talking about just a son. He did too, sisters. That's what happens when you dance with the devil in the dark. <laughs> Let me leave y'all alone. Let me go and get to my little old Yes, sir. Evangelism is still required. Because the sad reality is this. People will come from miles and miles away from home to see a solar eclipse and attest it to science. While God is the creator of both the sun, moon, and the stars, and everything in the universe, but they leave home to get in a good spot. Let me show you how, 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 how off we are so they can see darkness. I can't make this up. And brag about 
being in the path of totality. Uh, how many of us know from Luke's account of Jesus' crucifixion? It's similar to what's going to happen on tomorrow. Luke said, from the 12th to the third hour, darkness covered the face of the earth. That sounds like an eclipse to me. When the sun refused to shine, because two suns couldn't shine at the same time. Folk gonna have on eclipse glasses and I ain't gonna see God. And we wonder why evangelism is required. We wonder why we have to get in the hearts and the minds of those who will go through all of this foolery. I know some of y'all got your glasses. Some of y'all got more than one pair. <laughs> what you need glasses for? You want to see daughters, just go home, get in the room, no windows, and just turn the light off. You don't need glasses to do that. And it's all pointing to science. Looking at what God creates and name it science. Worshiping the creature rather than the creator. See how smooth God is? It's set up. It's a set up. Why they think they're looking at an eclipse, they're actually looking at God. In the path of totality. <laughs> I'm done. That's my clothes. Because we need to understand why evangelism is still required. Think of all of the money that's being generated over this one event that's going to last for four seconds. No, no, four minutes. Two minutes. And then, thank you, Minister Man. And then you may not be able to see it. It may be the day that Jesus said, you know what, y'all watching the sky, let me come out the clouds on you. Let me come out of the class while you're watching. Let me. So tomorrow, <laughs> don't get caught up in that crowd. Amen. Stay at home. Too much traffic. Wait till all this stuff pass. The city is swole up now. Over, over this. Scratching my head, do you know how much money was bit, pumped into this city for them to watch that? And we wonder why evangelism is still required. They need to be taught. Yeah, you can call it science, but I call it creation. 
because it's unexplainable how these things happen. Signs in the sky that Jesus talks about. I'm going to try my best not to look up there, y'all. If I come back here next week with some dark glasses on, y'all know what didn't happen. <laughs> amen, somebody. Give the Lord a great amen. The Lord didn't move me to do all, you know, the hooping and all that. He didn't move me to that today because I just need to talk to us because evangelism is still needed. And I know that there's many things that we do at this church that God is pleased and glorified with. I want us to extend that service into what? Evangelizing. Amen. Amen. Just as his disciples leave the first resurrection Sunday with a message that he lives, we have the same message that he lives. And we can tell the world about it. Amen. And when they ask us, how do you know that Jesus lives? Because he lives in my soul. Amen, lights and walls. Beautiful, amen, beautiful, amen. The church is standing. Church is standing. Maybe there's someone here that will join us in this effort to commit this service to evangelizing. Thank you.